Review copy provided by EA. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order reminds me of those top 40 hit compilations you see advertised on TV, promising all of the year's biggest hits on one disc, except this time they're performed by a Star Wars themed cover band. They could have called it Now That's What I Call 2010's Video Gaming, and that wouldn't have been much longer than its current unwieldy name. Apologies if I just call it Fallen Order from here on out. And for some, that variety will be its biggest strength. But it's also Fallen Order's greatest weakness. It feels like a mashup. Here's a bit of Sekiro, a touch of Uncharted, a dash of Tomb Raider, and it doesn't always mix that cocktail in exactly the right proportions. For all of its merits, and it has many, it can feel like less than the sum of its parts. Don't get me wrong, this is a good game, but it had the potential to be a great one. Hi. This is Caleb from Spiel Times, and you're watching our spoiler-free review of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. This is a review of the PC version, played on an RTX 2070, a Ryzen 1800X, it's out now, on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Star Wars is a series that found its origins in the films of Akira Kurosawa, whose depictions of feudal Japan's factional struggles in The Hidden Fortress inspired George Lucas to use that film as a template for the first Star Wars all the way back in 1977. So it feels appropriate that Fallen Order takes notes from another samurai epic, this year's spectacular Sekiro Shadows Die Twice by From Software. Combat here is fast, frenetic, and rewarding. Employing a stamina-based parry system, there's a great balance between risk and reward that asks players to resist the temptation to keep attacking, in favor of a more defensive approach. The feeling of accomplishment when you break your enemy's guard and swoop in for a killer final blow is fantastic, and these finishing strikes are intense and well animated. But there's a sense that animations sometimes linger a split second longer than they should, and that hitboxes aren't as precise as they could be. There's a good variety of enemies in Fallen Order, from the deadly Purge Troopers, with their glowing dual blades, to Ogdos, a breed of hideous Triclops Toads. The game's six planets each have their own threats to deal with, and it's satisfying to learn the position of a foe waiting to leap out from behind a column to surprise them with a deft swoop of Cal's lightsaber. But the game doesn't always use this variety well. Some encounters simply dump a large number of the same enemies. Increasing the number of stormtroopers you have to face from 5 to 10 doesn't really make an encounter more exciting, just more tedious. Playing on the game's second hardest setting, Jedi Master, the difficulty felt about right for this type of game. There's a few challenging moments, but veterans of the From Software titles Fallen Order's combat takes inspiration from will breeze through. There's a good variety of locales in Fallen Order. Clone Wars fans will love its depiction of Dathomir, whose large, hostile mounds of red rock contrast with its gorgeous, ornate temples. These levels are sprawling and mostly well-designed, but it's not perfect. Bogano is the first planet where protagonist Cal Kestis is set loose to explore, and while it hides many interesting secrets, the samey look of its branching paths can make navigation cumbersome. There's plenty of incentive to return to these planets throughout Fallen Order's lengthy 20 to 30 hour runtime as Cal unlocks new abilities, opening more paths and shortcuts. While chest rewards are cosmetic, I didn't mind, as customizing Cal's lightsaber with the bits and bobs you find along the way can be a fun distraction. There's a number of puzzle sections that are well balanced and clever, and although the game sometimes pesters you to ask your droid for hints, the handholding fades in later puzzle areas. The lack of fast travel, though, really great. There aren't enough shortcuts in each area to alleviate the glut of backtracking, especially in its second half. Exploration usually shines over the game's more scripted moments, which can feel derivative. One early section feels ripped straight from Uncharted 2, but Respawn haven't quite mastered the Naughty Dog style. Part of what makes that studio such experts are the way they let the camera linger when others would cut away, and pile spectacle on top of spectacle until the sequences become unforgettable classics. Fallen Order has some great action moments, but it's too manic, cutting from one thing to the next so quickly that it doesn't always have time to sink in. Luckily, it's much less of an issue in the game's final act, when it gains confidence and begins to more successfully fuse its influences into something that feels fresh, 
If every part of Fallen Order was as good as these last few hours, we would be looking at a potential classic. Fallen Order takes place in between the prequel trilogy and the original series. Players fill the shoes of Cal Kestis, a young Jedi apprentice hiding away from the Empire after the Great Jedi Purge crushed his dreams of moving from Padawan to full-fledged Jedi Order acolyte. Suddenly discovered by the Imperial Inquisitor known as the Second Sister, Cal is rescued in the nick of time by two ragtag Republic leftovers. Grease is the game's charmingly gruff, warm-hearted pilot, and alongside him is Seer, Cal's guide on this new adventure. The Jedi Order has fallen, and the Seer seeks a vault hiding a holocron with a list of Force-sensitive children that could either rekindle the spark of the Jedi Order, or, in the Empire's hands, crush it forever. But the emotional core of this story comes from discovering the truth of Seer's mysterious past. She's the reason why the game's story works so well. While many of the beats are predictable, Fallen Order is centered around a strong cast of interesting characters. I don't want to give away anything about the second sister, but she's a great villain at turns both sinister and sympathetic. We seek a dangerous fugitive. This is no common anarchist, but a devotee of the treasonous Jedi Order. Unfortunately, this great villain is not balanced by a similarly great protagonist, and Cal Kestis is one of Fallen Order's weak points. His generic, reluctant hero routine wears thin, and he feels more like a bystander rather than a leading man. Luckily, the game more than makes up for it with a stellar cast of new characters. And before you ask, I will protect BD1 with my life. He, he's, the droid. Droid. He's, he, he's the best droid. He's the best, he's the best droid. droid. <laughs> Fallen Order's most exceptional skill is its ability to immerse players in the world of Star Wars. It nails the atmosphere, and it does a great job of making players feel like they're stepping into a lost Star Wars film. The score mixes familiar John Williams melodies with new work from Respawn veteran Stephen Burton and Battlefront 2's Gordy Hogg. Huge horn hits scream excitement, while moody strings and woodwinds swell tension and danger. Sound effects work as strong, but I did notice a small number of unusually mixed cues and audio glitches that impacted the timing of some scenes. Fallen Order isn't the best looking game on the market. I started my playthrough on PS4 Pro, but was surprised by the low resolution and blurry textures. The jerky frame rate was giving me an actual headache. So I decided to restart the entire game on PC, and I'm so glad I did. The game really shines on a well-specced rig. Character models look good, hair's just right, and environmental details like foliage and ground textures are convincing. High caliber art direction and details like the signature screen wipe will have series fans feeling right at home. But Respawn's implementation of Unreal Engine 4 doesn't quite stack up with its most impressive recent titles, like the Coalition's Near Wizardry with Gears 5 or Ben Studios' open world spectacle Days Gone. There's a distinct impression that the game needed more time, as if it was rushed out the door to meet a deadline. While Fallen Order is an occasionally buggy experience, the frequent loading hitches and stutters, even while running off my high-speed NVMe SSD, were more annoying. They remained regardless of what graphical settings I tried. In my short time with the PS4 Pro, the game just didn't look or feel good. The jerky frame rate, low resolution, and blurrier textures made booting up the game on PC almost feel like a next-gen remaster. Fallen Order reminds me of the first entry in the Uncharted series, and I don't just mean the superficial similarities, like the third-person perspective, towering action set pieces. Both games are bold, new directions for highly regarded, experienced studios, and both Fallen Order and Drake's Fortune feel like interesting first attempts that don't quite live up to their mammoth ambition. For all of the delightful combat, fun puzzles, and great narrative moments, Fallen Order is still marred by derivative action, frustrating navigation, and technical issues that prevent it from taking its place alongside Jedi Outcast and Knights of the Old Republic as one of the all-time great Star Wars games. Still, this is an adventure worth taking, and it's an unqualified must-buy for Star Wars diehards.
There's endless potential here, and every possibility that Respawn can learn from their mistakes, further develop their undeniable talent, and produce a sequel that elevates this franchise in the same way Naughty Dog elevated Uncharted with its sequels. How fitting that the first good single-player Star Wars game in several years represents what the original George Lucas classic did back in 1977, A New Hope. I'm giving Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order a 7 out of 10. Thanks for watching the Spiel Times review of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. If you liked it, feel free to give us a like, subscribe if you want more videos like this, and ring the notification bell to be alerted whenever we make new videos like this one. Did you love Fallen Order, or did it disappoint? Let's carry on the conversation down below in the comment section. Feel free to follow me at Caleb Weiser on Twitter, and Spiel Times at Spiel Times, links to the rest of our social media in the description.